a lot of times when agency owners are not getting sales, they immediately look at their pitch deck or their niche, and they think that that's the biggest issue. In this video, I'm going to share with you the number one thing that you must have in place inside your social media marketing agency to increase sales and make it so easy that a toddler could sell your services. gentlemen, Justin Saunders here. And in this video today, we are going to discuss how to create an irresistible offer inside your social media marketing agency. So if you are someone that is struggling with sales or has a very low close rate, this video is exactly what you need to know in order to boost your conversions, get more sales and ultimately scale your advertising business. So with that being said, if this is your first time on the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. I post social media marketing agency tips and tricks every single week. I've been currently running mine for over five years now, and it's time for me to come on here and share the secrets with you guys. So with that being said, let's talk about how to sell anything to anyone with an irresistible offer. Now, before we even jump into this, let's just first understand what an offer is. A lot of people don't even know what the definition is. And if you look it up, it's a verb that says present or proffer something for someone to accept or reject as so desired. So basically, you're just presenting something to someone and they're going to accept it or reject it based off of their needs. And if you look at this and break it down a little bit more, an offer is different than just a product. Now, a big misconception in the social media marketing space and just online space in general is that an offer and product are the same thing. And in reality, an offer is very different than just a product. And I'll give you an example here. So let's take lead generation, for example. That is a product. SEO, that is a product. Instagram, Instagram growth management, that is a product. An offer is where you put these together. An offer is something with like lead generation plus database reactivation plus Google five-star review, that is an offer. And when you put all these together in an offer rather than a product, it builds something that is more of a process that you can sell all together and make it irresistible for your client. And when you do this right, you start selling an offer rather than a product because your client, your prospect will be more enticed to buy an offer rather than just one product. If you're somebody that's struggling with sales inside SMA, then you're going to want to look at changing from a product to an offer, because when you have all the offers together, it makes it a lot easier for the client to say yes. And I'll explain that here in a second. But first, we got to take a better look at understanding what value is and how it even makes sense in this whole equation. So what is value? Value, noun, the regard that something is held to deserve the importance, worth, or usefulness of something. So it's basically just, if you put it in perspective, the value somebody puts on something, how they look at something. And Russell Brunson, if you guys are familiar with him, came out with something called the value ladder, which really properly understands value and how you can put it into the marketplace to better serve your offer. So value ladder, if you look at this right here, it's the way you take people through the value ladder is just by providing them value. And I'll zoom in on this. And I'll zoom in on this for you. As you can see, the value ladder right here is basically you're just getting people in on the bait, the front end, the middle and back end, and then you upsell them. If you've ever seen this, this is something that Russell Brunson and a lot of the online marketers talk about with getting people up your value ladder, getting people in for something little and then getting them at the top. Now, a perfect example of this would be something where you have like a chiropractor that gets somebody in for a $27 offer and then upsells them to, you know, a $99 a month subscription and then up to their, all the way up to their 5k package. That would be a value ladder. And that's why I put this in here, but you're probably like, Justin, how does this value ladder resort to what I do with my social media marketing agency? Are you, are you telling me to sell something for $29 and then sell somebody for $3,000 a month? No, I'm not. I'm telling you that you need to understand what a value ladder is and how to provide value to people because in your market, the value that you give to someone that's a prospect for you is going to be a different value than a different market. So when you understand this, you need to make sure that you're giving the right type of value to the right type of prospect 
And then when they look at this and you put this all together for one offer, they're going to think of it as a no brainer. So let's go over a quick example of a bad offer. A bad offer would be, we've been a family operated business for 12 years and we run Facebook ads. It's no bueno. No one's going to buy that. No one cares that you're a family-based business. A good offer, on the other hand, is we guarantee you 90 new patients looking for stem cell treatments or else we give you a full refund and $1,000 just for wasting your time. See the difference in there? There is something in it for them. Whereas the bad offer, it's like, hey, well, we've been doing, we, we, we've been doing this for 12 years and we do Facebook ads. Prospect has nothing to do with that. It's like, okay, well, I've been in business for three years. I don't know Facebook ads. How does your offer help me? Whereas the good offer, okay, so you're going to guarantee me 90 new patients looking for stem cell treatments, or else we give you a full refund and a thousand dollars just for wasting your time. The prospect's going to think in his chair, wow, I have nothing to lose. Worst case scenario, I get 90 new patients looking for stem cell treatments. If not, I get my money back and a thousand dollars just for wasting my time. Wow. Sign me up. And when you do this, you want to be very specific on how you actually do this. Don't overpromise and don't underdeliver. Too many times I see people come in here and make claims that they can't fulfill on. What I am telling you guys to do here is make sure whatever you put into your offer is something that you can actually perform on. And if you're just getting started, don't worry, you can gradually increase this. Whatever you create right now doesn't have to be your offer that's set in stone forever. In fact, we constantly change our offer because we're always getting more data and we're better improving our systems. And I actually had a call with one of my one-on-one -on -one clients the other day about this, and they had a really good offer in play, but they started to have to refund some of their clients. And we took a look at it and they were right on the right track. They were just over-promising a little bit and they were really new to the market space. The that best advice I gave them was, hey, make it something that you know you can deliver on, that your client will want, and then also commit to the long game with this. Because the more you do this, the more data that you will create inside your business, and then you can use that data to make your offer even better than it is. So if you're not where you need to be right now, thinking, I, Justin, I have no idea what my offer is, it's okay. Just get started. Get a case study in play. Get some numbers in. Like, Don't freak out about the long haul. Like, Just get started and figure it out as you go. That's my best advice for you. So now you might be wondering, Justin, how in the world do I find a good offer? Well, here's how you do the research for this. They call it funnel hacking, which is the process of strategically investigating the sales and marketing process of your competitors. If you've ever heard about funnel hacking, I'm sure you understand that you can go to like Facebook ad library and go see what your competitors are running for ads. You can find their funnels. You can do research. Basically, funnel hacking is just doing research on what people in your industry are doing, right? That word hacking, some people might take offense to it, but at the end of the day, it's just going through, putting in your information as if you were a customer and going through their funnel to see what they're doing that's different than yours. I'll be honest with you guys, this is the best way how I've learned to grow any business. And whenever a client comes to me and says, hey, I'm in a brand new industry, that I have no idea about, the first thing I do with them is go find some people that are already doing really well and then go and funnel hack their process to see what they're doing well that's different that we can mimic and do better in our process. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to copy someone. You just want to find out what they're doing so you have the knowledge to understand how to better it yourself. Basically, to sum that up, funnel hack is you go out there and you find what other people are doing and what they're offering in your industry. And then you make something better off of that. Now, if you're going out there and you're pitching your offer to prospects and you're trying it out and it's not working, there's a couple of different things that you can look at. Number one, which is probably the most simple is, are you talking to the right type of people? Does your offer have an alignment with the prospects you're speaking with? For example, you wouldn't go to a real estate agent and say, we're going to get you 30 patients or else your money back because real estate agents have nothing to do with patients. Whereas the same thing around, you want to go to a healthcare clinic and say, Hey, we're going to get you 10 clients because clinics don't do clients. They do patients. So that's why it's important to understand your specific market. And if you haven't seen my video yet on like finding the right niche and the importance of niching down, there'll be a link down in the video where you can go check that out. 
highly suggest you do because that will help grow your business the right way. If you're trying 10 different industries right now, you're going to get stuck and you're never going to really hit the blast button. And I'm speaking from experience. So go check out that video if you haven't yet, but just know that the first thing you need to look at and understand is, are you talking to the right people? Next is, is your price too high or is it too low? And believe it or not, your price can be too low. If you are speaking with a very sophisticated buyer, a lot of times they want to pay more. And I'll give you a perfect example of this is I was interviewing some media buyers and just finding out what they've charged and things like that. And I've been in this space for a little and the people that said they were only charging like two, $300, I question that because I know any experienced media buyer in the space that I was looking in was at least $2,000 a month. So someone that was charging too little, it got me thinking, well, they're probably not as experienced as the type of person I want. So keep that in mind. It's not always going to be like that. In fact, I would rather you, when you first get started, have a little bit of a lower price. That way you can work on that. Because again, if it's lower, it's, it still has a higher chance of closing rather than something that's too outpriced. So just know, start lower and you can always increase from there. If you're in the lead generation space, we have a full video on pricing. I'll leave a link for that down below as well. Um, very good video and instructions on how to price your stuff the best way. And from what I found from doing this for over five years of experience in the space, what I'd recommend for you. So go check that out. Again, recommend you start out low and you can increase your prices from there. All right. And now to wrap this up, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of homework. I'm sure you're probably not used to seeing someone giving you homework on a YouTube channel, but that's what I'm here to do because I want to help you out with this. So my homework for you is block off 30 minutes on your calendar, turn off all distractions, turn off notifications, put your phone away, tell who's ever living with you or around you that you're busy for 30 minutes, 30 minutes to an hour, whatever it takes, and just get in a zone, get in your work zone and come up and tweak your offer. Post in the comments down below what you come up with your offer. Maybe you already have an offer, post in the comments down below. I'll give you my honest feedback on it and then help you tweak it along the way as well. So that's it for this video. I know we switched things up a little bit. Instead of doing the typical slide, we went to the doc and I wanna hear your feedback as well on how you like it because ultimately what I wanna do on this channel is give you the right type of information and things that you need. So let me know, please. I'm looking for your feedback down in the comments down below. And with that being said, I appreciate you and make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. We post twice every single week about social media marketing and how to make money online. So with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.